I am Karthik here from Design School by WP Algorithm. I am a web developer and a WordPress blogger. I make WordPress and elementary tutorials for beginners. So if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's get into today's video. In this video, I will share CSS tips and tricks that you need to know as an elementary user. So the first tip that I want to share with you is to find class names. A lot of beginners find it really hard to find class names of the things that you really want to target. Well, if you are a developer, you know how to do it, but I'll show you how to do it. It can be done in two ways. So if you're in a browser in Elementor interface, just minimize the side panel, right click on the element that you want to find the class name of, click on inspect. Remember, there's no shortcut for this. You just need to inspect and find out. And as you keep finding out, it will become easier. Now you can click on this button and you can hover over the elements in the interface or basically click on them so if I click on that you can see it will give me the ID and also the class of that particular element so I can simply double click on the class attribute so it will copy all the class names I can simply copy command C that will copy its class name now I can go to the CSS of this tab click on advanced under custom CSS I can simply say selector I can paste all the class names and when you paste all the class names you don't really need all the class names to target the elements you need the generic ones so by generic I mean elements that indicate what it is this comes with experience but you can be sure that something such as elementor tab title or elementor tab these are all generic and they can target the elements that you want so you can remove the second class and you need to add a dot before the class name now you can target the elementor tab now you can say color just like that the color is changed you can also change the background like that see that so now this is all great but you can actually use the class names even a step further so now that this tab is active I can right click on this click on inspect and when anything is active or whenever an event is occurring on your page there is an extra class getting added you can see there is a class called elementor active you can double click to get that class it will basically copy all the class names commands you to copy the class names now we can use the active class to target just the active tab so I pasted all the classes I don't need all of them I just need the active class that gets added when the tab is active and you can see it just changes the properties of the active tab right now if this becomes active you can see that here so you can add effects like that and the same thing applies to any widget that has this active class so even accordions get an active class so you can actually copy the same CSS because accordions have the same class names you can inspect and find it out now I can go to accordion click on advanced click on custom CSS paste just like that so whenever an accordion is active it gets the properties that is specific in here so first find the class name and use appropriate selectors to add the code to change the properties of that particular class name now if you find the inspecting and finding the class name a bit difficult well you can use a plugin such as CSS hero now you just need to go to your CSS hero interface now this is a page made with Elementor now you have to be in the Gutenberg interface or Gutenberg editing mode and you can see something called customize with CSS hero you can simply click on that and when you click on any element in CSS hero interface it will give you the class names so you don't have to worry much about it all you need to do is to click on CSS hero you can then click to view the class names and add CSS right within itself I'll show you that in a bit you can also use CSS hero to get class names so when you hover over it or click on it and go to inspector it will give you all the class names so you can see it gives you the pop-up with all the class names now you can also copy you can simply click on yes so it will add all the class names so even this way you can get the class names that you want as you can see the active tab has this class name which is a complex selector or combinator so you can simply copy that and use it in your Elementor interface so this is also a neat way to get CSS class names every widget has CSS classes and IDs right so 
when I click on a tab, I can go to advanced and right here, there's something called ID. So ID should be unique for that particular page. It shouldn't be repeated. But CSS classes can be the same. So let's say I'll call this or give it a class of blue BG. I'm just giving this tab a class of blue BG. Now let's say I added CSS with that class name. So I'll say dot blue BG and I'll say so that adds a background color of blue. Now since we added this as a class name, now whichever element has this class will get this properties. Let's also add one more property to make all the text visible and maybe border. So let's add the same class to the accordion now. I'll click on the accordion, click on advanced and I'll add the same class which is blue bg. And just like that it gets the property from the CSS that we specified because this is targeting the element using the class name and whichever element has this class name will get all the properties defined in. Now the third tip is thanks to the recent Elementor update. Instead of saying selector and putting this CSS specific to that widget, you can give this element a class name. So let's say I'll call it my tab and you can replace selector with dot my tab. Now you can take this whole CSS. Now you can take this whole CSS. So we actually gave the accordion. We should give the accordion a class of my tab. So you can take this whole CSS and the selector should be replaced with class name. You can take it and click on the hamburger menu. Click on theme styles and right under custom CSS. Click and just paste that. So that way you have all the global CSS that you need in one handy interface. Now you can stretch this out to work on it or change any properties. So you can open this up from within any page and you can take the properties just like that. So you can maybe change this to black or maybe white all from the single interface. So you can change all the CSS properties from the global CSS in the theme styles custom CSS interface. Custom CSS is a pro feature. So if you don't have that, you can install master add-ons custom CSS feature. You know, that will give you the CSS field. So that's the third tip to add CSS globally. Now the fourth tip is to add or use SVGs within all your Elementor widgets. I made a masterclass video in which I showed you how to upload, how to actually make these SVGs and upload to your WordPress website. If you missed that, you can check that. It will be in the Elementor Basics playlist. So once you have the SVGs on your site, you can simply copy that link and you can use it as a background for any of the elements. Now here I've targeted the active tab title so I can simply say URL and within single quotes, I can paste the path to that SVG icon. So when the tab becomes active, you can see now I get the SVG icon. The same thing with this, right? Really neat. Maybe you can position it the way you want. Maybe you can repeat it or don't you can maybe say repeat Y or say repeat Y since there are there is not enough space to repeat. Let's actually increase the height. Maybe I'll increase it to 100 pixels. So something like that. So you can increase the height. Maybe put that icon there. Maybe to indicate a particular thing. So you can use SVGs as backgrounds within any of the elements in Elementor interface. Now the last thing that you need to know is to find the browser support for particular properties. Now most of the CSS properties that you'd commonly add are supported across all the browsers. but there are some properties that are not really supported. So you can go to caniuse.com. It's a website where you can check the compatibility or the support for a particular CSS property. So let's say I want to check compatibility for animations. I can simply hit animations and I can select one from here. And for each of the property, it will show in which version of the browser that is supported. So it's really handy or if I type filters, so you can see for SVG filters, it's supported in IE from the version 10 and upwards. And for CSS filter effects, you know the versions and they'll also tell you when it's not supported. So it's really handy and you also get a global usage for that particular feature. So you can either decide to either include it in the CSS code that you write or you can simply leave it as is. So based on the property that you want to add within your custom CSS, 
You can go to caniuse.com and search for the property. If it's well supported, just implement it and some properties might require you adding prefix such as WebKit and all and you can also use Mozilla Docs for that. So you can type CSS filters and usually refer to Mozilla Doc. It's this one developer.mozilla.org. Click on that even they have excellent information regarding all the CSS properties. So if you scroll down, they'll also give you various examples on how to use them. So you take the code and put that in your CSS area and you can see here they have browser compatibility and they also tell you if you have to use a WebKit prefix or basically any other prefix or something like that. So that's it for now. So those are some really cool CSS tips and tricks and things that you need to know about CSS. There's a lot more to CSS and recently I got a mail from a, someone saying can I copy CSS and JavaScript from any other website? That's horrible. Why would you do that? I'm a web developer. I know this stuff. You should never copy CSS from another site. I don't know who told you this but CSS is a way to style the structure. So if your website's structure is different from the website structure that you're copying CSS from, it may produce some unwanted results. It's horrible. It's like putting a car's engine into a bike's engine. Would it work? Well, I don't know, it might. And eventually you'll have some horrible things going on. So never ever just grab CSS or JavaScript from any other site. I think people are misguided regarding this aspect. You need to target the elements on your site and based on the elements you need to add CSS on a per item basis. And even if you target or copy CSS from any other site that might produce unwanted effects for your website. So keep that in mind. These are some really cool CSS tips that you need to know. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.